Hello, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and Cross Watchers. This is your tarot and oracle reading for the week ahead whenever you are finding it. If you are subscribed and watching long as I post, this will be for the week of April 22nd to the 28th, 2024. So let's dive into it, Sagittarius. You have Healer of the Ages. And you know, I was thinking when I was shuffling your cards, it's so pretty out right now. This is a beautiful time to do a reading. The sun is going down. It's been a unnaturally warm day and the birds are chirping outside. There was a rainbow earlier. It's just, there's a sense of magic like in the air with the weather. So there could be a connection that you have with the weather this week. Maybe the weather is a lot nicer than usual. Maybe it's all rainstorms and that's like your cozy weather that you love focusing on. Um, it, it doesn't matter what it is. There's some sort of connection I'm feeling here with you and nature. And it almost feels like the elements um, that surround you wherever you're at in this world, whenever you're watching this, I don't know. There's something about it that's just awakening a deep healing within you. Kind of like um, right now, we're in the middle of spring and the ground is dethawed, and this is the first week where I live um, where the frost is finally over. So the plants can come back to life, I can start bringing plants outside, beautiful things like that are happening here. And I feel something very similar taking place with you where it's like, your life is sort of dethawing again, you're coming back to life. Okay, so these past few months, you may have been in, in your own type of hibernation, you know, just staying in a lot, just focusing on you, focusing on some deep inner healing, and it feels like this transition is taking place your soul is warming back up and you're getting back out there some of you guys if you've had a long period of being single you may literally be um going to like dating events or on dating apps or even just going out and talking flirting with people and opening yourself up to that so very interesting um things are heating back up again it feels like also just in your personal life uh, there may be a lot going on at this time. Uh, you know, it's funny for the other fire signs, I kept getting this message of side jobs or like freelance jobs. So that may be something you're doing, maybe just making a little extra money on the side, even if it's not for money, just for fun. Like I had this friend one time who, um, they, they were driving for Uber full time as their position, but they were saying, you know, even if I'm rich, I still want to do this because I just love meeting new people and talking to people. Like I would still do this as a hobby. Uh, and I thought that was very interesting. So there could be something that you're doing like that. Um, so like either side work or just, just things that, you know, make you feel good. Like, um, or what was I, let's say volunteering. I couldn't think of the word volunteering for some reason. Volunteering for a charity or just getting yourself active in the community. It feels really good. So I am seeing some of that coming out for you. Healer of the ages, looking good. And even if you're not actively seeking it, I feel like this energy is around you and this is going to show up somehow. We have truth coming out. The truth will set you free. I feel like people are opening up to you and telling you things that are important pieces of information. They may or may not be telling you in the timing that you would tell, but that's neither here nor there. When everything is done as an offering, even the act of speaking, you get shown when to talk and when to be silent. And uh, your words come from silence, not fear. You do the talking, dear Lord. Take me over and speak through me. I am seeing here... Sagittarius, a lot of you are um, just this person who lets the universe speak through you and you do a lot of healing light work on this planet whether you realize it or not and I feel like everything that you do is an act of like service and giving, giving back to, to humanity, to the earth. Um, Y'all are really cool people. I, I like this reading. And I feel like you're aligning yourself more with your own inner truth here. So I'm getting images in my mind of like um, buying clothes or styling your hair or something, your home, in, the, in a way that it feels very much in alignment with who you are. Oh, and I'm getting this really exciting feeling that comes along with that as well. Um, some sort of aesthetic changes may be taking place here. Not even just aesthetic, but I'm even seeing the music you listen to, the words you choose. Some of you are thinking about your personal style and appearance in a very interesting way that's new to my mind because it's literally coming flooding in in your reading where it's like you're, you're looking at yourself as a brand, okay? And 
the, the feeling that comes with this is so much deeper than just the words, you know? Because being a business owner, I know what it means to like have to brand yourself, but no, th this is deeper. It's like viewing yourself as a personal individual identity as a brand and not in a business way where you're selling yourself, but like, what can I wear? What can I say? What music can I listen to? How can I decorate my home? What car am I driving? What are those things and how can I tailor them to be more in alignment with my own inner truth and who my soul is? You know, for example, you may have the brightest, most bubbly personality and your entire house is gray. You know, it just doesn't line up. Or you may be someone who loves feeling confident and loud and flashy and your entire wardrobe, all the clothes you have are like black. You know what I mean? So there, there's something here about like a realignment. Your physical environment um, wants to be realigned with this new you. It feels like for the past uh, several months, you've gone through a major ascension. And I've been feeling this in the collective. I really do feel like on around January 20th, 2024, uh, the earth went through a portal. And I know this sounds crazy, but this is just what's been coming through with mediumship. So I might be crazy, who knows? But I felt like the earth went through this sort of spiritual portal. And this is a turning page where the old paradigms that used to work uh, and serve people that were very destructive and exploitative are no longer going to work. That old way of operating is dying. For example, companies and corporations getting away with underpaying their employees, using slave labor, child labor, things like that we're going to start seeing die off uh, in the next 40 years that is my prediction and anyone who used to benefit from exploitative um, ways of going about things being sexist racist xenophobic and they refused to change when that portal happened that like that was like it you know you may have seen some growth from that energy before but you're not seeing it anymore and I feel that a large majority of humans um, around that time really ascended spiritually and a part of that process was letting go of a lot of things from our pasts um, people that didn't serve us situations that didn't serve us beliefs especially and you may have felt a massive shift in maturity and how you even like carry yourself and how you set your boundaries within these past several months and I feel like week by week month by month Spirit has been guiding you through this transition. And this week feels to be a week where, okay, like we, we've made a lot of these spiritual energetic upgrades. Now it's time to match your physical environment and reality with these upgrades. And so I am literally seeing a lot of Sagittarius energy people who are watching, um, renovating your house or your wardrobe, your hair, like getting tattoos, piercings, whatever it is to make yourself more in alignment with who you feel as a soul. You may have been feeling a um, decrease in confidence. I've been feeling this for the fire signs a lot this week too. A decrease in confidence. The more you sort of mm, carry yourself with the physical aesthetic um, and beliefs that that old version of you had, okay? So for example, if you find yourself going back into old ways of like comparing yourself to other people, etc., cetera, um, really, really, you're feeling that massively in a negative way. But the reason why it's so uncomfortable is because it, it doesn't fit you anymore. Think of like a hermit crab, okay? Crabs grow and they have to change their shells out, okay? And hermit crabs, when they grow, they literally like for five seconds, they do it so quickly, they remove their shell from their back and then they find a slightly bigger shell to put themselves in. Same thing with plants. When they become root bound, you take them out of the pot, you loosen up their roots and you put them into a slightly bigger pot. Not a pot that's overwhelmingly big because then when you water it, the water stays there. It doesn't go anywhere. It becomes very um, moldy and, and rotten. Root rot happens, things like that happen. So I see you here feeling uncomfortable emotionally, spiritually, mentally. Um, when you're trying to keep yourself in the same old pot, the same shell that's become too small. And for some reason, physical aesthetics are really playing into this for you. So that's fascinating. <laughs> okay. Um, but not just physical aesthetics, your thoughts, your beliefs, everything. All right. Anyways, we have cleanse coming out. Exactly. Yeah. Your body, mind, and soul are urging you to take time out for some much needed cleansing. Just as you wash your car, clean the house, or tidy your office, your body also needs care and attention. It's time for some spiritual, emotional, and physical cleansing. Exactly, yes. I don't know why I keep getting these images. 
some of you guys are like, man, I just need a little something to boost my confidence. Um, and I'm seeing people like dyeing their hair. I'm seeing images of like brightening, whitening your teeth, getting a tattoo some of you might be getting. Uh, definitely a lot of you are buying clothes this week, like new clothes that you feel really comfortable in or just like match you more, you know? Like if you have this sort of hippie vibe and you dress like, I don't know, like casual Friday in corporate America. <laughs> like it just doesn't match up, you know? So you may be getting more hippie clothes, you know, things like that. So anyways, uh, let's dive into your week more specifically. We're gonna be pulling six cards, two rows of three from the Murder of Crows tarot. First card out for you is the Seven of Swords. Wow, crazy way to start this reading. You know, this talks about people only looking out for themselves and being a little bit selfish. Okay. You may have been victim to that in the past, you know? And it's interesting because Seven of Swords is a very lying type of energy. And you had the Truth card coming out. I feel like it's becoming more and more apparent to you when someone with, with, withholds vital information to you. Another thing that I'm seeing popping up here that's very specific is there, you could have a friend or someone in your life and they may be honest and upfront with you because you have a very open energy and you don't judge. However, they may be telling you about how they withhold information from other people or lie to other people. Um, for example, like you may have a coworker who you overhear like cheats on their wife or their husband, okay? Or you may have a friend who starts like dating someone and they don't like tell that person what their intentions are and they may have very specific intentions that, you know, a lot of people might not really like. You know, it's things like that. Um, people for some reason feel comfortable sharing that with you. And I feel like more and more often as time goes on, you are becoming less of a safe space <laughs> for people to share that information with. And that's a good thing. You know, it's like, I appreciate you telling me this, you know, but how do I put this? It's not that you shame or ridicule them for acting in a way that may not be morally correct. It's more so that you feel increasingly uncomfortable in situations like that where there are people who treat others with disrespect. You know, it's like, I don't wanna be around it anymore. I, I don't care if you treat me well. Like when I see you treating other people wrong, you know, that makes me uncomfortable and it makes me lose my desire to be with you as a friend, family member, whatever. So I am seeing some of that information coming out, some truths coming out around that. And it, it makes you uncomfortable because it's like, okay, but what are you withholding from me? You know, because I'm not special and nobody is special. Everyone is the, on equally, equally deserving of respect. So I think it's a massive red flag when people say, oh yeah, I'm treating this person like that, but I would never treat you like that. Why? I'm not special. <laughs> You know, if, if you're a liar, you're a liar. And end of the day, it does not matter the people outside of you. Everyone outside of you, everyone outside of everyone else, we're all just reflections of each other, okay? So when someone is lying to someone, they are just a liar. It's not because that person elicited them to lie. That's never the case. If I ever am in a relationship or a scenario where I feel like it would be easier, more simple to lie and I feel like I want to lie, I ask myself, what is wrong with this friendship and relationship where I feel like I have to walk on eggshells and lie and hide things? And then usually I don't end up remaining friends with that person because who wants to walk on eggshells? Okay, now sometimes a lot of liars, here's the thing though, they lie because they're insecure. And usually they grow up in an environment where uh, they may have been harshly criticized for something and, um, or like, you know, grow up with like helicopter parents or something or just didn't get enough attention. And they found that lying uh, was often the best way to either get that attention or avoid confrontation. And it, it may, it can become a habit. Um, and you know, some people are just lazy. You know, they don't want to, they don't have the strength or coward. They don't have the strength to have an emotional, deep conversation that may not be the most easy to have. So I don't know. I'm just seeing someone in your energy here and they may not be lying to you. It doesn't feel like they're lying to you directly, but it's like their behavior, how they treat other people is a big turnoff to you. And I feel like it's becoming increasingly, increasingly uncomfortable to be around this person, just like the hermit crab outgrowing their shell. All right, we have the strength card coming out. Exactly, guys. This is what I'm saying. Strength card describes exactly what this person lacks. What this strength card represents the ability to sit with uncomfortable emotions and in uncomfortable scenarios. She literally has her hands in this lion's mouth. Both are in control. Both are very trusting. She, she trusts this lion. The lion trusts her because even though it's an uncomfortable situation, you know, 
operating out of a place of love and honesty and mutual respect, there's never anything to fear. And I, I feel like you are in this, posi this position of strength where you are wanting to operate your relationships in your life at a very high degree of integrity you know, truth, honesty, accuracy. And I feel like you may open up some more difficult conversations this week. Some, I do see that for some of you, you know, healing deep conversations uh, with people who may avoid those types of conversations and run away from those types of conflicts. And I don't know, I just, I keep getting this increased sense of discomfort with people who are conflict avoidant, very specifically, like people who don't want to have any problems, who don't want to talk through issues. And when you give them some constructive criticism to improve upon your relationship or friendship, they start getting really defensive and angry, etc. You know, those people, you can love them to death, but you're never really going to have a healthy relationship with them until they learn how to undo that behavior on their own. And if they're unwilling to put in the emotional work to do that, then that's something else. However, for a lot of you, the interesting thing I'm seeing here is that these, this person may actually be getting help. They may be going to a therapist. They may be doing some sort of work. It is not your job to heal this person. I do want to say that. Um, but it's like you know the level of integrity and, and strength that you're capable of having in relationships. And you want that. And I, I feel like you're less willing to settle this week, which is great. <laughs> we have the Nine of Swords. Yeah, see, here, here's the thing. Nine of Swords represents painful um, emotions, you know, mental health issues, and coming out right next to strength is actually really, really good because I, I'm seeing this is a week where you guys are really focused, especially with Healer of the Ages. Oh my God. There, this is giving like therapy vibes, okay? Deep journaling, deep conversations with people, opening up about your mental health, health, opening up about how you've really been feeling in certain relationships and situations and dynamics, you know? I feel like it's definitely happening, okay? So this is a week of deep, deep, deep conversation. Second row of cards out, fourth card. We have the Hermit, very special. Yeah, you no longer fear being alone and I feel like that's what is helping you to be in this very strong position of this massive healer on this planet. And you know, I feel like your ability to be more independent and have a strong foundation within yourself and, and spiritually seek yourself and, and understand how to balance yourself out is the reason why it's becoming more and more uncomfortable to tolerate the people who haven't done that same amount of healing work. You know what I mean? It's not your job to help fix anybody. And honestly, like so many people try to just be so overly loving sometimes. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say it, you know, if you are friends with someone or really close with someone who really, 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 really struggles with their mental health, you know, everyone wants to help and support them. And it's like, why would you walk away from them at their time of need? Why would you, you know, abandon them at their time of need? I'm on the other end of the spectrum where I'm saying, okay, if someone is at such a low that they're not affecting your mental health, you should be self-honoring and take a break from that. And let them figure that out on their own because you can't heal anybody. Everybody has to heal themselves. And you know what? That's tough love, sure. But that is true love for yourself. And I'm seeing with the Hermit card here coming out underneath the Seven of Swords, like you're not afraid to walk away or, or take some space or set up some appropriate healthy boundaries with people who are operating from a broken place where they're doing things like lying or cheating or, or withholding truths or just being overly selfish you know it's like you you can do that I still love you but I'm not gonna sit here and be your victim or tolerate this I am not a safe space for that energy we have the ten of pentacles coming out in reverse yeah you're trying to conserve your money your your energy your health, your wealth, your well-being. I don't know why the random messages came through. I saw, I, I heard the, the phrase change in cortisol levels. Very interesting. Cortisol is the h hormone that, um, it's like the stress hormone. When you feel stressed, you have high levels of uh, cortisol. It spikes naturally in the morning. And it actually is what keeps us awake and gives us energy to do things throughout our day. And I don't know why I'm, I, the word fluctuation, um, and cortisol levels just came out. So for some of you, I don't know if you are 
it, you could either be taking some sort of relaxing substance um, that lowers that. Others of you might have the opposite problem where you don't have enough and you just feel very brain foggy and, and slow, like you can't focus. I don't know why, I'm, I'm just seeing fluctuations and it'll look different for everyone. Some of you guys, this may not apply at all. It's just something that's coming through. Uh, so some of you guys watching, you know, maybe having that, you know, I that resonates with me. I'm not even a Sagittarius. I just quit caffeine. Um, so naturally my whole, the way my body processes stress is completely different. Um, we have the five of swords coming out. Yeah, right underneath that nine of swords too. The five of swords is a card of walking away from very defensive people, people who can't handle conflict in a healthy way. You know, even a nice friendly debate turns into something much sharper than it has to be, much more serious than it has to be. And, you know, I, I do see that um, you're just putting up really healthy boundaries here. And I feel like by not tolerating or enabling that behavior anymore, um, it actually helps the person who has the problematic behaviors because they recognize that their probably problematic behaviors do not work and aren't fulfilling you know they can really miss out on lovely delightful friends and people if if they keep hiding and lying you know i don't know why that lying withholding the truth is coming out and guys i don't want to scare any of you because it it doesn't feel directed completely at you like their initial lying, cheating, stealing behavior, whatever it may be, um, it feels directed at other people, but it triggers something within you because they may have hurt you in the past where it's like you you yourself may have been hurt by the past by someone else. Like for example, if you were cheated on in the past and you have a friend who is now cheating on their partner, it's like, even though they're not cheating on you, they're your friend, like that hurts you. You know what I mean? Even if you just have a high level of empathy and you, you don't have to, you haven't had to go on through um, what they're inflicting upon other people. If you just have a high level of empathy, it's like, you're hurting me. Like, I feel bad. I feel pain just hearing what how you're treating other people or seeing how you're treating other people. And I'm also seeing that's paired with a, can I even trust this person type of question in your mind. So definitely, like, I am seeing sort of a drifting away um, from anyone who may fit that description for you. And I actually think with the strength card, you're gonna tell them exactly why you're drifting away. Like, hey, you know, I, I don't want to be around this behavior. And you're saying it in a way that's so mature and just amazing. And I, I think it'll actually help the other person as well because they're gonna recognize, you know, what they're doing wrong here as well, even if they get very defensive with you, you know? Um, so yeah, that's happening in your social life. I see a major cleanse going on, changes in appearance um, to match the, the growth and development that's been going on for you spiritually. So it's a beautiful week ahead. I like this week. Uh, you feel very powerful, Sagittarius. Thank you for joining me. Definitely watch for your sun, moon, rising, Venus signs. And like this video, subscribe if you have not already, and comment how this resonated down below. If you want a personal reading with me one-on-one, -on -one, the link to that is always in the description box, spiritpsychic.org. I also offer my intention oils there and spiritual life coaching sessions there, so check it out. Bye-bye.